Okay, Brent from TradeGuild.blogspot.com, July 5th, part two. Uh, sorry for the abrupt interruption there at the alarm clock, but I can only post 10 minute videos at a time. Okay, we were talking about Nigeria, oil and gas, oil running up um, to 72, over $72 a barrel today, intraday. And there is uh, concerns over fighting resuming in Nigeria. Now, Nigeria is the biggest producer of oil in Africa and is one of the main um, exporters to the United States. So there's some concerns there. There's also some concerns uh, with refinery runs recently uh, not being up to capacity, uh, so on and so forth. So oil uh, has been up. What's not hot? Let's see what's not hot. Residential construction is not hot. I'm going to pull up the industry group here, here real quick. Okay, here's the industry group. And I'm going to give you a comparison to uh, the Na uh, New York Stock Exchange in blue. Residential construction in white. You can see uh, it did real well with um, kept, in, kept in lockstep with the market right into January. Crumbled over here. And uh, it's just been on a horrible, horrible downward slide. I live in a pretty hot real estate market and houses just are not moving over here. So uh, maybe we're gonna get a little oversold bounce here and maybe there's some opportunities on the short side there. Uh, investment brokerages, uh, not doing well recently. Mortgage investment, music and video stores are doing horribly. Sporting goods stores doing horribly. Um, what else do we have? I'm going to take a look real quick. Let me clean up this chart again at some international indexes. First, we're going to pull up uh, the Nikkei. And there's the Nikkei, to uh, Tokyo Nikkei index. What I want to show you was these toppy formations that we're seeing. Um, this looks like a shooting star. I don't know if you can see it there very well. Shooting star up at resistance there. Let's take a look at the uh, London index, the FTSE, and here that is. And we have something that looks kind of similar to um, dark cloud cover right here. This formation really should penetrate down a little bit further, but in any case, uh, not a very bullish looking formation. Uh, the Frankfurt, let's pull that up. And here we go with the Frankfurt again, uh, almost a bearish engulfing right up here at resistance again. And I think maybe uh, let's pull up the Hang Seng. And here it is. And this one we have what looks like a um, an evening star up here. So all these indexes, uh, it's kind of interesting, are all in lockstep, not looking so hot. Of course, there's inflationary concerns throughout the world right now. so. I'm not sure that's entirely surprising. Uh, we're going to take a look at some breadth indicators like I uh, mentioned before. First uh, one is going to be T2125 for any Warden users. These are the T2 series of indicators. Um, basically I have in blue, let me change this, this is going to be uh, the NASDAQ composite, actually let's use the NDX. NASDAQ 100. Okay, here's the NASDAQ 100 in blue and the NASDAQ advanced decline line in white. And, you know, again, this should be in lockstep, just like that 3C indicator. Uh, we see this is just falling apart over here as we're making new highs in this area. Um, this is just really ugly to me. I mean, I, I would not feel comfortable being real long and strong right now. Let's take a look at a couple other ones. Uh, the next one is T2115, if you're following along with Telechart. And this is percentage of um, stocks on the New York Stock Exchange that are trading two channels below their 200-day moving average or two standard deviations. Um, basically, you can use this indicator as um, an overbought, uh, oversold, overbought indicator. Usually when you see a spike, you have an oversold situation, a plunge, you have an overbought situation. But again, these are stocks trading two channels below uh, that 200 day moving average. And just look what has happened here since uh, May, June. We went from 
uh, like 2-3% up here to 14-15% trading below uh, two channels below that 200 day moving average. That's a market that is um, really falling apart as far as breadth goes. Uh, again, very, very scary numbers here that we're seeing. We're going to take a look at another here before I run out of time again. And this is T2109. And these are um, stocks trading one uh, channel above their 200 day moving average. Uh, and again, in this situation, we would want to see um, this indicator confirming the strength that we see in the index. And again, these are stocks trading one standard deviation above that 200 day moving average and it's down to 48%. Back here, we were 65 plus percent. So again, breadth is falling apart. Uh, what's the next one? T2111. And this is um, stocks trading two channels above their 200 day moving average. That's down to 23, almost 24%. Uh, from over here in the 40% area in December. Again, you can see price is moving up and um, this percentage of stocks trading above that 200 day moving average is moving down. Let's try one more. This is T2108. Percentage of stocks trading um, above their 40 day moving average. So you would think with the market making these highs over here, that we'd see a lot of stocks trading above their 40 day moving average. In fact, it's gone from 80 some odd percent down to 53. So this market is advancing on very, very thin breadth in my opinion. And I think it's going to run into trouble soon enough. Um, let's take a look at some uh, stocks on a personal note real quick. Um, first up BPG, which is a position I've been in and out of, mostly in for a while and I mentioned on the blog the other day um, exactly I said uh, it's a different story with BPG uh, I think it's so close to a reasonable level of support at 62 cents I think the risk is worth it um, this was over here the other day and we had a nice 14 and half percent move today on um, I guess it's on, on uh, the oil situation but maybe something else is going on with BPG in any case um, this 3C indicator is showing a positive divergence over here. So hopefully uh, something good comes out of that. Take a look at a couple trading ideas real quick. And these are just real um, short trades. They're not positions really, just uh, day trades or swing trades. The first one is C-R-E-S-Y. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Um, basically the premise of this trade here is that we have a, um, a shooting star and a bearish engulfing pattern. I think we can get a day or two of decline off this one. And um, one more here, MKTX. Uh, this is um, market axis holdings. And again, another bearish looking uh, formation up here, kind of a long legged uh, evening star. So we also have that uh, declining volume there. And on 3C here again, you don't see uh, this indicator making new highs with the price there. So I'm uh, in for a short on that one. And PLXT is next. Again, this is another short. Uh, just a swing trade on a position. And again, we have that little evening star right there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but PLXT. Uh, take a look at another. This is a long idea, T-A-T-T-F. I'm going to run out of time here in a minute. Anyway, T-A-T-T-F. You can see this nice um, ascending triangle there. Uh, we look for volume diminishing into that ascending triangle. We got the breakout. Maybe we get a pullback somewhere around this $22 level. Um, that's going to be it for today. So. Uh, check out tradeguild.blogspot.com. I have a new subscriber list that's available. I have details on it for a donation. These are very well-researched ideas. I'm going to um, post in a, another week or so the ideas from last week. We had a, a lot of really good movers that moved exactly as we thought they would. And uh, I'm going to have another list out here probably Monday. So check on the blog. I'll have a link for that. Thanks very much, tradeguild.blogspot.com.